dare you ask me if I condemn an act of violence, uh, uh, an act of oppression, or an act which is illegal. You should offer me the same respect that I offer you. They asked the Muslim, do you condemn? Oh, I saw this, right? I saw this. Do you condemn what happened to Salman Rushdie? Muslims should not have to. Just as I wouldn't go to a white person and say to him, do you condemn what Brevik did? Don't seem to call a white guy a terrorist, uh -huh. but only if he's brown and he's Muslim, then suddenly he's a terrorist. But if a white guy does it, it's for some other reasons. So, for, so if an MP gets shot up north, we're not going to call it terrorist. We're going to call it mental illness. There have been dozens, if not hundreds, of 9-11s on the Muslim community from the Western world. This is a very interesting yeah? point. Right? You go to the Muslim world, they've been ravaged by wars and weaponry that have been supplied to both sides in perpetuating these wars and the fighting and the division that have been created. So we've had more 9-11s committed upon our societies than the 9-11 that happened in America. And I believe that there should be certain basic principles that should be established. Agreed. That they they should be regarded as limits. Agreed. Set. And I and I said to you that if we set those limits, for example, with the Jewish community, yeah. I would say as a Muslim, why don't you offer me the same courtesy? Why don't you offer me the same protection? That makes sense. And I think it's reasonable, right? That makes sense, now, except I would take now, those rights away now, from the, the Jewish community. The other thing is this. The other thing is this. I like what Voltaire said. A people who don't learn from history are condemned to repeat it. Right. And what we've seen throughout history, for example, what we're seeing in India today. In India today, there's now an environment that has been widely reported that is gearing up to a genocide of Muslims. The rhetoric, the politicians, the clergy, the 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 the, the, uh, the, the people in the temples, for example, yeah. are openly on camera, inciting hatred, division, and violence is increasing on a daily basis. Well, then I condemn that incitement. Right. And now the thing here is this: who decides what is incitement? Who decides whether this is going to have a good outcome or a bad outcome? We have to. Right. We have to. So if we want to have that discussion, can so, we start by agreeing there's an optimum? I think in any choice, there's always an optimum choice. So there's an optimum level to draw the line on what constitutes freedom of speech. Yeah? We both want to aspire to what that thing is. Yes. Great. So what we, we should do, there. We're hunting what we should do is come to some common understanding yeah. and say, look, uh, if we're going to offer these rights to a group, yeah. it seems reasonable to offer it to other groups as well. We should definitely have a... Okay, right? We have an idea that where it should be equal Where there's for equality. Everybody. Right. Now, you want to raise the level of spent censorship. Um, no. You, you do. You no. just said you want to raise it so that there's no hypocrisy. No. And that, look, I thought I, you did. No, no. What I'm saying is that when something is... And look, we're clever people, generally speaking. Yeah. Right? Generally. I'm talking about when we come to people who are involved in legislation and yeah. dealing with the law and what have you. There are clearly certain things that you might say or I might say yeah. which are obviously uh, you know uh, 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 obviously fall within the realms of incitement and vulgarity and indecency hang on hang on you mix two things what? incitement yeah, is very different well, from vulgarity I'm just saying I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying that are, that are grotesque in their nature that are designed to be grotesque that are I can't, I that can't. are designed to uh, cause maximum pain rather than having this intelligent discussion of differences of opinion. Okay, but the way you just defined your terms, you mixed them apples and pears to me. You mixed incitement, which we agree is wrong, but then you mixed in vulgarity, which to me is Okay, fine. let's look at incitement. Incitement, we've agreed is what wrong. What is incitement? Incitement to violence. If there's any incitement to, to violence, violence yeah. we agree that's How happening. can violence erupt from a discourse about a particular people by otherizing them? making them seem like they're somehow they're the enemy within, like they want to take over this country. They want to establish their laws upon us. You can see uh, I, how I, that can incite nobody, violence, right? Nobody is in denial of the slippery slope connectivity Indirectly. as if you start bad-mouthing right. 
Yeah, if you start bad Indirectly, groups, but yes, it does. It will have payback, no yeah. questions. But you said you're the realist. Yeah. Okay. Realistically, what else do you expect? Okay. I have faith. It's interesting that I, the atheist, seem to have more faith that the human condition can face because it. Because you're a secret believer, that's why. Okay, Tony. well by that logic, maybe you're, you're a not. Closet, you're a closet believer, that's why. According to your faith, you seem no. to be arguing pragmatism. What I like about religion, yours included, is we are supposed to aspire to the highest principle and what is the best that can be achieved. Not just what's good enough or what might get you by, you go for the best. And the best in this is, we share what we feel, we argue it on its merits, we treat everybody equally. You're arguing that there's hypocrisy and you're correct because the Jewish community might be given special privileges or another community might. I'm not trying to be anti-Jewish, I'm just using an example. I'm arguing lower the bar. I'm a big fan of stand-up comedy, okay? I'm a big fan of some very, very extreme stand-up comedy because although it can be profoundly hurtful and insulting, I think in confronting those darknesses, particularly with laughter, in the open, it can be very healing, very enlightening, and there's often a lot of truth in going to those places where we feel hurt. And we're gonna become very, very namby-pamby if every time our feelings feel a little bit offended, or very offended, we start thinking we have the right to inflict our views and draw barriers for other people. Okay, so look, I don't think it's constructive. We clearly disagree. We do. Um, I would say that when you allow certain rhetoric in society, as the Brother Hill's already agreed upon, I think you were nodding your head as well. There are certain things that are a slippery slope. Definitely. And that lead to subjugation and oppression Definitely. of a people. Yeah. And I think personally that as, as I, I would hope rational beings and, 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 and sensible beings, yeah. that we would tr at least try to curb that type of... Definitely. Right, okay. But we so, disagree so, on the prescription on the, on the, on the of how okay. it's best to so do So let's it. deal with the second part of our topic of discussion. Oh, okay. What, which one? is that should Muslims condemn that's not my violence or terrorism. No, because that was our conversation. It was, but I, I, my question was more specific. It okay. was just to you personally. Okay? Oh, I see your okay. I was asking you personally, as someone who's chosen Islam as your faith. Yes. If I can, as an outsider, to... if, if, if you under, if you thought that that action was prescribed within Islam as you embrace well, that's it. That's not the way you worded it, Tony. Sorry? It wasn't. That's not the word. That's not the way you worded it. Last oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It was okay. slightly different. Okay, the way you were, now sorry, you're I, changing. The, no. You're moving the goalposts. Okay, hang on, hang on. Okay, I don't, that wasn't my intent to move the goalposts. <laughs> okay, okay. When we had this conversation originally, we had it off camera. Yes, yes. In a friendly way, yes. still is friendly. Of course. Now I'm on camera. I'm being more self-aware. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to pin down. Okay. So what I was aspiring to say. Okay. Okay was because you've chosen a religion, it's your choice, yes. and I think I'm allowed to inquire about your choices of course, and mine. Of course. I'm asking if you believe that action was, was representative of Islam. Was yeah, whether it was in line with the prescriptions yeah. of Islam and, as you understand. And I don't mind that question. Thank you. That's no, the question. I, I, you know I, what I, I don't mind that question. But, but what I do mind though is that when um, uh, Brother Andalusi he went on to uh, a, a um, he went on to a, uh, a, a TV interview yeah. with Jeremy Kyle. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, uh, there were a couple of other reporters there. Is Jeremy Kyle the really inflammatory Yeah, yeah, yeah. One? But he, he does okay. some uh, supposed, uh, you know, uh, talk, talk shows or whatever he does, right? right. And there was, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Douglas Murray as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah? They asked the Muslim, do you condemn... Oh, I saw this. Right? I saw this. Do you condemn what happened to Salman Rushdie? Oh, right? Abbas, this is going to get... No, I, my no. argument is... I saw that. My argument is Muslims should not have to. Just as I wouldn't go to a white person and say to him, do you condemn what Brevik did? Because you you look Christian. You you're don't. white. Do you condemn what Brevik did in Norway? Because he's quite right to say to me, what the hell are you talking about? No, I'm happy if What's you, that got to do with me? I'm happy. To I'm What's happy. that got to do with okay, me? Okay, I'm being honest. I'm happy I'm if sure you want to ask me yeah. if a Caucasian Christian acts in a particular way mm. and I self-advertise as being a Caucasian Christian, yeah. which I sort of am, sort of, <laughs> right? I'm happy if you want to ask me that question. I can handle it. My so, feelings can Tony, handle it. Okay? I yeah. would never ask you that question. Out Please of, do. Out of, I, no, no, I no. I'll tell you why, though. Go on. As I said to you previously, yeah. because I, within the Islamic tradition, have to think good of you as a pretext, as a Would foundation. You, let's say you heard on so the news. So as a foundation, 
as a foundation, I tried, I tried. as a foundation, I would think Tony's a good guy, and of course he would not be advocating advocating uh, violent acts. I and I but, would, but you see, I would respond that now, I, now, I appreciate your politeness, but right. in all fairness. I, I actually don't need that much politeness from you. I'd prefer that you weren't quite so polite and we had a more open discourse. I'm happy to address the question. I think it's a reasonable question. I do think, look, if the Muslim community is feeling very oppressed or is being, if it's being oppressed, that's wrong. If it's feeling oppressed, I'm very sorry. I'm trying to work out how no community feels that way to defuse the problem. I honestly believe that putting a lid on the bubbling cauldron just increases no. the pressure and it blows up. I know you no, think Tony. not, but I no. do, so we Tony, disagree first of all, you're not a minority in this country. No, I'm not. You're not being persecuted by the majority. No. You don't feel threatened by the majority. You're not misrepresented by the majority. Agreed. Agreed. You're not. You're not ridiculed by the majority. I get ridiculed. You're not and marginalized. Not in that you're not way, marginalized. Yeah. You yeah. don't struggle to get jobs like, like, from the like like the minor minority. You haven't do. seen my job interview. No, no. I'm just giving you an example. I know. I know. I know. Right. You don't have your kids at school being said that you know you're terrorists because you belong to this particular religion, but the Muslim community are. So when you ask that question, yeah. it has some certain underpinnings. I understand. It, it means that I'm assuming that all Muslims agree, so they're guilty. No, I Can you please prove to me that you're innocent? No, 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 then I'm sorry. Then no, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why, Tony. I disagree. There's a very interesting book written by, I've mentioned it to you, Professor, Assistant Professor Todd Green. Yeah. It's called Presumed Guilty. Yeah. And it addresses this very same question. And it highlights how by asking this question, it already implants in people this notion that they all seem to agree with this, or they're going along with this, yeah. and they have to provide their Innocence. They have to show their innocence towards this subject. Yeah, it's the same thing Trump did when he accused Obama of not being an American citizen. Mud sticks. I understand. Nonetheless, I refer you back to my slippery slope argument. We have to grapple with this stuff. If you can just accept that, I'm going to have to. But do you I really think like him? But do you think on, it's appropriate to ask a Muslim? Do you condemn? Yeah, this? I think. I think it is entirely appropriate. I okay. think the problem is how best to ask the question in a context where it's understood it's meant with good intent and within the histor recent historical context, they're actually being provided with an opportunity to defuse a problem and to um, win me round. Instead of seeing it as a negative and assuming that my motivation for asking it is presumptive. And for some people it will be, but with me it's not. If you can just look at it from the other person's point of view and go within the context of, dare I say it, for example, 9-11, recent history, and the fatwa which was issued from Iran, which is a nation state, which seemed a little bit official. It's not unreasonable for people to ask, by the way, can you tell me what your understanding of that creed is, seeing as you've embraced... I'll tell you why it's unreasonable. I'll tell you why. Okay, well. Because you may have somebody like Jeremy Kyle, yeah. who will never ask a Christian, uh, white Christian, yeah. to condemn what the Ku Klux Klan might have just done in Texas. It won't even arise. Ah. It won't even register on his radar ah. to ask that question. Sorry, I should reframe my question. You're answering the so question. What he, but what he will do yeah. is if there is a Muslim there, yeah. do you condemn yeah, this action? Now, if you have this disparity, uh -huh. then it's clear that you're targeting one people yeah. with a slanted innuendo presumed guilty, uh -huh. as the book's title says, whereas the other is automatically presumed to not be part of that. Because that's why that question is not being asked. You're preaching to the converted. That's not the question I meant was asking you or trying to ask. You're conver converting me to the idea that Jeremy Kyle is a hypocrite and an annoyance. I agree, but I wasn't asking... No, but I'm asking you, should that question have been asked? I know, I should, I should contextualize my question more specifically. Okay. My question more specifically is, is it reasonable for me personally to ask you personally, given the recent history, 9-11, Iran making a statement, an official statement. So it's not just me asking you with good intent, because I'm actually partially curious to know 
Is it your understanding that that is within the prescription of Islam to behave? But that's fine. I have no problem with that. Okay. If you my, 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 my problem right, so is it's a one to You see, one. I understand, but Tony, my problem is not with people asking me. You know, I've heard a lot of this propaganda. And I've seen the fact that we don't seem to call a white guy a terrorist, uh -huh. but only if he's brown and he's Muslim, then suddenly he's a terrorist. But if a white guy does it, it's for some other reasons. Yeah. So, for, so if an MP gets shot up north, yeah. we're not going to call it terrorist. We're going to call it mental illness. I want to join you yeah? hand in no, no, hand hold on. in attacking hold this on. hypocrisy. We'll call okay? it mental illness. Yeah, no, no, but hold on a second, okay. hold on a second, right? So what I'm trying to say to you is that in that context, yeah. okay, I think it's highly inappropriate for somebody not to ask me whether, you know, I've heard all of these things. What does your religion say about these things? It's a reasonable question. That's a very reasonable. Thank you. I have no problem with that. Okay. And in fact, I would hope. Would it be? In fact, I would hope yeah. that people would ask me that question more. Good. So, uh, Do you know why? Excellent. Because then hopefully, that would be a genuine question. It is. Uh, 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 you know, hopefully wanting to uh, assess yes. the reality of what Muslims and Islam actually says on the matter. No, actually I'm not. I'm only for the minute trying anyway, to assess the but reality if you're, but of if, what you But if somebody think. asks me, do you condemn what happened to Salman Rushdie? Yeah. I would say, why are you asking me that question? But well, we've managed because, to just contextualize it so you're not offended by me asking no, no, you but I'm, personally the question in this way, which yes, is... Yes, because, you know, words matter, right? Okay. And, and, and how you say things matters a lot. Okay, so I'm phrasing it as, in good faith... Yeah, I have no problem with because that. Because I have no problem have with no that question. Problem. Then I am asking you the question. Yeah, that's fine. Would, is it your understanding yes. that... The attack on, is it your understanding that the attack on Salman Rushdie was prescribed within Islam as you embrace it or was contrary okay. to Islam? So we that's would, just as you personally, that's fine. nobody so, else. So we would argue that the country that you live in, you have to abide by the laws of the country. You're saying we. Hang on, hang on. Muslims. You said we. I'm not Muslims. asking we. I'm Generally. asking you well, personally. I am we. No, you know you were you. As a, as a unit, as you a whole you. unit. You're no, not no. all Muslim. No, no, but I don't follow my religion uh, according to me. I follow the consensus of that opinion. That is your personal choice. And that, at yeah. that level, at the primary the level of choice, it is you. Yeah, and I'm just asking you Yeah, but I'm personally. going by consensus. The consensus is that when you live in a country, you have to abide by the laws of that country. Okay, hang on, I'll, now, back, now, hang on, now, I'll, back, hang on, I'll back off a minute. Yeah. Hold on, I'll back off and I hear your point. So what you're saying is the position of Islam is contextualized by the politics of the nation state it's occurring in. And the prescription of Islam, your understanding, is therefore the attack was wrong because of that. I'm saying that it was unlawful because, and wrong. because under Islamic rule, okay. there's so many caveats. Uh, First of all, even in a Muslim country, mm -hmm. even if somebody commits a particular act that could warrant an execution, let's say for argument's sake, say somebody commits Sorry. murder, somebody commits murder, yeah. the result of that in Islam is that the murderer is executed. Okay, this is great. However, I oh, know that's not great. Howe Sorry. However, however, yeah. however, you cannot do, you cannot be, you cannot be a vi yeah, You can go around us, can't you? Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's actually a, a violent act. Nah, it is. I'm not that offended. That's I can violence. handle well, that's it. Wrong. I'm robust well, well, wrong is the wrong. It's all right. I can work with wrong it. Wrong is the wrong. So he, he was rude. It was on camera. So we won. So the, so, the, so the question here is, I've lost my train of thought. It's all right. Yeah. So I'm saying that, um, so for you to ask me that question is not a problem. Good. I would be happy to answer. So there are lots of caveats. So first of all, you can't be a vigilante. I'm not. In Islam, as a Muslim. Oh, I see. Sorry. So you can't just go and get a knife and say, I'm going to go and execute him because he murdered somebody. Okay. If someone, if, no. It has to go through a proper judicial process. Can I interrupt for just one second? Yeah. I have a friend here who's holding for a long time. He keeps chipping in. I, but no, hang on, let me be clear. He just I, likes chips too so much. You That's invited me in, therefore I haven't felt I could invite you. And if you would like to invite him he, in, that's your He's choice. more than welcome to make a comment. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Okay, but, 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 at some point then. So, so, it, yeah. so what I'm trying to say to you is that you're not allowed to be a vigilante. Good. What this guy did was a vigilante attack. He went out and did it of his own accord. It's not allowed in Islam. Okay. Secondly, um, 
he's not in a Muslim country. Uh -huh. And the law of the land is that they're allowed to say these things. Okay. As a Muslim, if I don't like it, I speak out against it, yeah. or I leave the country. Okay. I can't enforce my religious values yeah. through violence and force on that particular so no people. Vigil, no vigilantes and you have to go, um, you yeah. have to... Law of the land. You have to work in accordance with the law of the land. Right, right. Guys, could you so in both of the, back off just a little bit? Hi, guys. So in both of these things, that's two reasons. Two Thank main, you. two main initial reasons. Thank you. That it's completely unlawful to for the action to have happened. Excellent. Well, under, under Islamic rule. But what we have to appreciate here. Now, let's what, just pause and pick up. This but in a wider context. Let me pick this up for the camera. Hang on. Abbas has made it clear. Yes. Am I misrepresenting you? <laughs> no. Abbas has made it hopefully clear that according to the prescriptions of Islam, as you understand them and advocate them. The action was wrong on yes. at least two counts. Absolutely. No vigilantism. That's right. And you have to respect the law of the land right. within the country. That's, That's right. That's very clear. That's right. Thank you so much okay. for saying this much. This is good. Now, the, the point that I'm trying to make to you here is this. Yeah. We can go deeper. But yeah. Thank you for that. That when an action is done by an individual, uh -huh. what we actually find when we delve a little bit below the surface, much of this, not all, because there are people who are rational in terms of... Uh, they have their faculties, let's say. They're not rational in their actions, sure. but they're not mentally, let's say, or uh, they're not mentally impaired. They don't have psychological issues. Yeah. But what we do find is a very high case of many people. And I want to emphasize the point again, not everyone, but in a very high proportion of cases that they have mental issues. The people who attacked uh, the soldier, Riggs, Rigsby? Rig, Rigsby? What, the guy who was yeah, decapitated. Decapitated. He had a long history of yeah, schizophrenia. Schiz 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 yeah, yeah. these, these guys have mental illness. And what I'm trying to say to you, Tony, is that what we have now, a narrative, through this freedom of speech, is reporting these issues as if these are like a sane individual who are following their faith, and they're just following a very extreme version of it, and it is representative of Islam. Because this is some well, of the abuse of freedom of this speech. This is some of the things that Douglas Murray will say, for example, that ISIS are the real representatives of of Islam. Well, actually, it, it would be like in fairness, me. If I ask a member of yeah? ISIS, they will right. say that. But I could ask the Ku Klux Klan. I agree, and they'll say to me they're following the, the truth. You know, I they're know. burning a cross on the lawn before they're lynching somebody. But I'm not going to say, okay, that means you're a good Christian. I'm with you. Can Come we on. pause on Ku Klux Klan for one minute? Yeah. If my friend here was ever going to say anything, yes. I didn't know. Shall I? What's your name? Jamie. Jamie. Yeah. Abbas. Come closer, Hello. Jamie. Hello. He won't Hello. bite you. I know. Okay. Okay. Very back slim in. We young were man. Clan and it, was just a, it was just a simple slim, slim question. Young man. It was just a simple question about yes. are you, what, what was Douglas Murray's comment? Douglas Murray's yes. implication yes. And, and comments are yeah. that ISIS are the true Islam. Yeah. So do you They're believe, the true Muslims. Do you believe the state should sort of have the power to sort of penalise him for them words? No, I believe that. Uh, no, I'm not saying. So look, no, I don't, no, so that's no, not my question. I'm not saying that everything everyone says yeah. that they should be penalised for. Let's there's, say he did it every day. There's a lot day. of there's Let's, a lot of rhetoric out there. Lovely. Let's say he did it but, every day. Yeah. Would you then allow the no, state to penalise? No. Well, I, I think what should happen is this, though. Yeah, okay. In a fair, balanced society, right? People should allow, as you said, yeah. the voices that counter such claims. Perhaps the equal or at least similar yes. airtime. Absolutely. Yeah. To That's allow people idea. to make we up their own minds, right? Because so for we example, don't agree on a lot of things, so example, Mohammed Hijab right. has openly challenged Douglas Murray yeah. to a debate. That's, yeah. no, you, no, that's, a, a debate that's, openly that's different. repeated no no I'll, t I'll give you an example I'll tell you why I'll tell you why so Douglas Murray is supposedly on solid ground he sees himself he's intellectually so grounded in what he's saying then he should have no problem debating one of our alhamdulillah intellectuals Muhammad Hijab on the topic that's pre-arranged with the moderator and let's see who comes out on top I'm not with the argument. Defend Douglas but he's Murray been running with his tail between his legs. So, so, so do you believe he that doesn't want to have the debate? Do, do, do you but believe what, he, what Douglas wants to do? You're, you're not really, no, no, you're I'm just, answering you're the question. No, 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 just no, talking no. platitudes. No, 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 sorry. What okay, Douglas? What Douglas the, wants the to do? I'm used to arguing the way you do. What Douglas Murray? What Douglas Murray wants to do is use a predominantly white right-wing press 
to air his xenophobia and his racism against Muslims and Islam. I'm not, I'm not, and and, and unfortunately, I'm moving to Douglas Murray. And unfortunately, and no, no, I understand, Douglas I understand. Murray. But what I'm trying to what I'm trying to explain to you is that it's only just and fair in a free society yeah. that the opposite. Of Agreed. the opponents but who are allowed airtime. But the example that you gave about Mohammed Hajjad having a platform to talk about with Douglas Murray, this is all up to the, um, the dictates of each individual person who wants to talk to who. If you want to talk about like platforms accepting people on, I'm a big fan of trying to get people from different sides to debate. But we're talking about like free speech and like the state having some sort of control or something. Where are the powers that are going to balance this? Tony's talking about individuals having the freedom to talk and trying to like balance it out amongst themselves. Whereas I don't understand. Are you saying because that there's an external you, force that is balancing it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, so no, I'm no, asking no, no. you, what is that external force? No, but what force? I'm saying, You're giving more power to the state. No, no, You're no. actually like minimizing the tool no, of free my, speech what, to my, give it to the weaker no, my point, to attack up. My point to you about Douglas Murray was yeah. that he's been given a platform. Yes. By people yes. who are supposedly interested in freedom of speech, yes. freedom of expression, and I, I would hope educating the people. So, but that, what they're doing is, you see, they're allowing his speech to dominate. And and where there friend, are others, we would all agree. We all, we all agree. You're preaching to the converted. We yeah. think you want equal representation, yeah, big time. equality in the law. And if Douglas Murray is being given a disproportional platform to fair. other representatives, let's be totally, fair. totally. Now, when, the other thing is, is the you know your charge. point. But also, you know your point about it's a free choice of Douglas not to enter, entertain yes. a debate or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what it is. If you've been, uh, if you have been trying to bulldoze yeah. Islam and Muslims for the last 10, 15 years. Yeah. Then I think what you should at least be able to do is be man enough and confident enough in your own abilities to have a moderate, a moderated discussion. We agree. agree. And we agree. if you run, and if you run, then you're, you're, you're clearly on shaky ground or you know you're on shaky ground. We agree, but what you're missing That's is, fine. in this free speech environment, when Douglas Murray fails to engage, we arrive here at Speaker's Corner where freedom of speech is guaranteed so that we can publicly condemn and humiliate Douglas Murray. Yes. You see how this works? That's great. You see how the thing... Now we're on hang on, hang on. I'm <laughs> holding, hold it, hold it. In, oh, you're not going to shake my hand. No, sorry, I will... <laughs> well, I, I'm not quite as down on Douglas Murray as maybe oh, you are, fine. okay? I, my initial feelings about Douglas Murray was I found him rather repellent. I'm actually finding most people more nuanced than I'd originally thought they were from all spectrums, okay? So even Douglas Murray may not be quite the demon that we think he is. It's complicated. Well, Nonetheless, I, he shouldn't, you, know, you know what it is? He shouldn't duck the debate. You know what it is? When his nostrils start flaring, because yes. you look at Douglas, literally his nostrils flare with rage. Yes. And he calls Brother Andalusia on that interview an Islamist and like... A, 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 equating him to be a terrorist and an extremist. I saw that interview. Somebody who has gone out of his way to talk against these things, to me that's deplorable. And to me, that level of hatred, that venom, that, that obvious on his face, I, is shameful, quite frankly. I, you it's know shameful. what? This is going to cool. I'm saying this because I trust you and I like you, okay? I saw that debate. It wasn't a debate. Okay. I saw that interview. Yeah. My honest reaction, yeah. I was with Douglas Murray. Well, there you go. And I was surprised to find there myself in that position. No, but there you go. No, I don't, I wouldn't, I'm, I may open up a whole can of worms no, by no. saying that, but I'm sharing with you my honest response to that because I yeah. thought, I don't know who the Muslim guy who was on, but I thought, dude, you've got a chance here to say something which will defuse a lot of trouble. And he was ducking and diving. No, he was wasn't. No, he wasn't. What he was doing was demonstrating exactly what that book that I quoted by Assistant Professor Todd Green through his research tells us that what we should be doing, and we know this anyway, which is that we should never be asked the question. And if it's asked, we should challenge the question. How dare you ask me if I condemn an act of violence, uh, 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 an act of oppression, or an act which is illegal? You should offer me the same respect that I offer you. Can yeah. I, can I test that? that as a pretext, as a foundation, that you're a good guy and you probably do condemn but it. But nonetheless, in this discussion, you have decided no. I would have, have answered it. No, but no, but you have. I would have said, "Get lost." No, but we've just done this. When I asked you this question, you have responded to it, and I think it, you didn't ask me that question. Okay. Okay. When I asked you the question, I thought it was a pertinent one, which is, "Is it representative which of is Islam?" Which is respectful. 
Oh, fine, okay. So the which lack is of respectful. Respect. Can I, can I which is, question, which is, test this of idea. course you can. Which is also based upon wanting information to clarify yeah. perhaps what you should be accepting or believing about yeah. Islam and Muslims. And it's not just that. The again, other one doesn't. Again, I want, it's not just that. It's more personal than that. Sorry, but I want to go to the difficult point. It's also to assess who you personally are. It's not just for me to learn about well, the faith. Then I would be insulted by that. Ah. Because because I would not assume that you would support Hitler because you're a German. No, no, no. no. I was 99.999% sure that you were not that person. No, okay? I would be. But inevitably, when I asked that question, I'm learning both about the faith yeah. and about your allegiance, how you personally no, feel because about if you had a suspicion, you. if you had a suspicion... I don't. If you, I'm just saying, if... If I felt that you had a suspicion yeah. about my integrity, about my honour, yeah. about my respectability, yeah. then yes, that would upset me. I understand. But it similarly, would. similarly, I would hope that you have your own self-respect yeah. and that you're a nice guy and you go out of your way to be a nice, cordial guy. Yeah. That if somebody misrepresents you or perhaps doubts your sincerity, you perhaps would be upset by that or concerned I'm, by that. I would be upset, but I think the difference is I would be upset, but nonetheless, I would prefer they shared it with me and I would hopefully be confident enough that I could counter it and bring them round to my way of looking at it or bring them closer. That's, or great, on an individual That's great on an in individual process. Yeah. The but problem li is... Life is lived at no, an individual no, but level. The problem is that these questions are asked publicly yeah. and they have a public reaction. They have a public perception. Yeah, and that's the problem. But go on, please ask your question. Well, I was trying to think about something now. So surely we should always grasp the opportunity to sort of like uh, project ourselves into the public sphere so that we can um, sort of affect that public yes. perception of us. Yes. So let's, I was going to give the example. Let's say I come here one Sunday and I say, I'm a climate activist and I'm a vegan. I believe these causes so passionately. I really do believe they are the greatest threats or whatever. Then in the news in the week, you see that... Um, Acts are committed by vegans and um, climate activists, which are like derailing trains or sneaking onto farms or something. The next week you come here and you ask me, oh, Jamie, do you, do you believe in them? Things that they vegan activists That's do. not what we're asked. We're, we're asked it's do you, a power, do you it's a power condemn? Power. Do you condemn the bombing yes, of that They come thing? up to me. They go, you were talking about that. Are you on that side or do you condemn them type of that? Yeah. yeah, I think um, yeah. if I were to go, oh, how dare you say that to me? I thought I was a nice guy. I think that's being way too... Um, bow down. No. I can stand up and say, no. I be yes, I believe in the yes, cause, you're not, or no, look, I believe we should never do all, that type of First of, of all, you're not a minority. You're the majority. Well, I am, in, the, in the version of uh, You're a white Englishman. Yeah. In, no, in but, the, but the point so, I'm trying to make to you here is this. You have a minority. You see, look, everything's within a context. Sure. It's not in isolation. If you ask me to condemn some, an act of terrorism, it's not an isolated question. I, I, it's based upon an entire fabric that's been created. But by me phrasing and, and the question specifically Tony, enough, then you're willing yeah, to address it. Yeah, but that's very different, Tony. Because your question was respectful. Yeah. Your question was to ask me but, to educate you about right. what Islam or what Muslims believe. Okay, so hang on, wait. It's very but, so but, then, but hold on, Tony. Okay. But within the context yeah. of the environment that has been created about yeah. Muslims, when you then ask that question, do you condemn it? It has a very different I get it. scope of meaning. I get it. So look, can yes. I carry this out to a wider issue then? Therefore, surely what we're learning from this conversation, because hopefully it's constructive, that Douglas Murray and the like need to understand is that in principle they want to ask a question. The problem is not that the question in itself is the context and motive. And, and if they can reframe... And the implication. And the implication. But so if the Douglas Murrays of this world can reframe the question in a different, more specific context respectfully, you personally will that. be more than happy to address it. I would it. have a problem with that. Hopefully other Muslims might be as well, but you would, and this is good. I don't have a problem with that. Okay, so then Douglas Murray and co, watch out. You're not being respectful enough. You're not framing the question specifically. If they can concede that, can you concede and understand that it's not an unreasonable question necessarily? It's not in and of itself an unreasonable question to ask. It's if not, it's phrased it's correctly. It's not unreasonable to ask that, you know, we hear these people claiming that they're doing this for Islam yeah. because they're following Islam. Yeah. What does your religion actually say about these things? Yeah. That is perfectly fine. I wish people would ask that question all the time. Okay. But what I what I completely am opposed to is a question that's asked within an environment and a context that has many implications, one of which are guilty until proven innocent. 
Yeah, yeah, no, you always want an environment of innocence or proven guilty. And you don't want that. Don't even have those conversations. Anyway, Shani, I think it's been a lovely discussion. Oh, oh, can I say one thing? Go on, please. Okay, okay. So, we're agreeing. Yes. Let's only have you, before you even have those kind of discussions, you've got to have established a playing field where the assumption is innocence yes. or proven guilty. Yes. Until you've established that playing field, don't have any discussions, yeah. okay? I mean, think good of people. Yeah. You know, have a, have a, have a good, don't think, don't assume just because the media have told you that this is like the enemy within or that secretly the majority of us follow or, or, or agree with ISIS. But just that, as, that, just as the, you're scared, reality. just true. as you're scared, do you understand how I say we very loosely, how we're scared as well? Yeah, when the towers went down, that was the big thing. Of okay, course. that made a huge impact. We also, and I don't mean we, because I'm an individual. Let's, let's not group. get into Tower Seven. Yeah, let's not get. But <laughs> no, let's. He, he's probably read a bit no, about let's that. Let's not get anywhere near. <laughs> let's, not get to, let's not go to. No. Let's not go to when Rumsfeld said I think 2.1 trillion dollars are yeah. unaccounted for. No. And guess what? All those computers are in Tower Seven, and coincidentally, no plane crashed I in Tower Seven. I wouldn't and dream they, of. I hate conspiracy yeah, exactly. theories. They're funny movies. I they're hate, rubbish no, in no, real but life. You know what it is, Tony? I hate them too. Yeah. I don't like. I don't delve in them. I just think it's rather interesting. That's all. No, it's, That's it's, what I'm saying. That 2.1 or 2.3 trillion dollars uh -huh. had disappeared, and the accounts and the computers were in Building Seven, which was not hit. But just, the map. but just, but oh, just happened to just come out. You are into. This. I'm just saying it's rather interesting. Okay, this is another debate to have. Anyway, to wind, uh, let's not get into that. <laughs> To try and wind this one up, now damn, I've forgotten where the point no, was. No, you were saying that I was saying, after I can understand why your community, as, I don't like putting it into groups because I, I don't think tribal, I think it's yeah. individuals. Yeah. But for a minute, if we were representatives of communities, yeah, how your community may feel nervous, put upon and misrepresented, yeah, I can get that feeling. It's reasonable that I should get that. I'm asking, can you understand how the community I'm part of might also feel a little bit on edge and a little bit nervous given some recent history which was exacerbated by the attack on Rushdie. I don't think oh, their you. feelings about that are unreasonable. Tony, you know what it is? There have been dozens if not hundreds of 9-11s on the Muslim community from the Western world. This is a very interesting yeah? point. Right? You go to the Muslim world, they've been ravaged by wars and weaponry that have been supplied to both sides and perpetuating these wars and the fighting and the division that have been created. So we've had more 9-11s committed upon our societies than the 9-11 that happened in America. We Muslims were just as vocal and disgusted by what had happened there. But what we see is an absolute destruction of the Muslim lands and the Muslim people by the West generally, funded by them, whether covertly or overtly, whatever, right? Overtly, they, they've done this. So we've had many 9-11s, but I don't, in that context, look at white people and assume the worst of you. Because I know that that was, that was your governments. That were our governments. That were maybe some elite people at top who, the weapons makers, the manufacturers, they pushed, they lobbied for these wars. I know the media, for example, who often uh, didn't report on these things fairly and actually went with the military uh, you know, uh, guidelines in terms of what to report. But I don't look at a white person and hold you in any shape or form responsible for the hundreds of 9-11s that happened in the Muslim world. Sorry, let me come in on this one. You know because, what I mean? Yeah, listen, I think what you just said was really beautifully said. I hear your point. Okay, I think the Arabs have definitely had the thin edge of the wedge. I think in the West we get hit once badly by something exactly. and it shakes us to right. our core yeah. in a way that you yeah. guys have probably, if yeah. we were talking tri communities, yeah. you guys have been living in day in, day out. And we must look, you know, slightly soft and oversensitive. I can hear that and I take your point. You know, if look, there's a way we can take all of the you know, truths and facts which have been mentioned yes. and gel them into yes. a coherent story, you know, that's just, a good way to Tony, just one other thing, you know? Three and a half thousand Sorry, people, three and a half thousand people died in the Twin Towers. Yeah. Completely horrible, horrid for their families, for their children, for their wives and husbands, yeah. parents, whatever, whoever lost, firefight, whatever. It's a horrible thing. Yeah. 
but a million civilians died after that when the Americans and the British, predominantly the two, they say allied, but we were the bulk of the forces. The Americans were the bulk of the forces. A million civilians died in, the, in, in Iraq. Yeah, I hear you. A million. Yeah. You look at the French and what they did in Algeria. Three million people killed. Can I ask a question? Millions of people. And you know what it is, Tony? As a Muslim, I would have a lot of, uh, let's say, sympathy for somebody who also condemned those actions. At least, at least was aware of I them. I do, I do. But the point, I know I you do, do you're, you're a thinker, but there are people today who are, no doubt, and I, and I, and I don't blame them because it, it is a deplorable thing to cry and to be upset about the 9-11. Yeah. But where is their Proportion, level of, proportionality? Where is their sympathy for the million civilians that died yeah. in Iraq? Yeah. Where are the, the sympathy for the tens of thousands of civilians that died in Afghanistan? Well, hang on, I'd add to or that. Or in Libya. I'll add to that. The oppression. Or the ones that are being persecuted in Palestine. I hear you, but where, where's, where's the tears? Also, the oppression that occurred before 9 11 that led up to it. The history yeah. of Western interference exactly. in the Middle East and exploitation exactly. is pretty despicable. We have the luxury of not having to live with its consequences. We, let, we get 9-11 and we'd become acclimatized to a rarefied level of safety. I, everything that you're saying is correct. But I think this is why freedom of speech is so important, is so we can share these truths. But you know, on a, Tony, this is what I'm trying to explain to you. On an individual level, yeah. that's fine. In a society that's balanced, that allows freedom of speech to be aired from multiple views, and uh, you know, and giving some sort of equality, yeah. it's also a good thing. Yeah. Well, of course, we have some limits, all right. But when you have a disproportionality of one having a voice and the other one is literally muted, muted, right? Then that's not good. Then that's Clear, not good. Clearly, we're against. And that. so, what what we have today is we have freedom of speech. The people who are crying for freedom of speech yeah. are often the ones who have the platform and are doing the ridiculing. And the ones who are the victims don't have a voice often because they don't have that pro uh, you know, direct proportionality or, or, of rebuttal. And so what you end up with is, as Rabbi Herschel said, the words making the worlds and the world that we're making today. Look, throughout the world, we have problems in Europe, in America, in much of the world where people are moving to ultra-nationalistic and often uh, xenophobic and racist ideologies sure. are succeeding. Sure. And this is, this is primarily because you're having this unfettered, so social media and these things are incredibly powerful. And, and I would say that we are regressing from our qualities that it was to be a good human being, to offer equality in the, in the sight of the law, yeah. in, in the sight of one another, we are going, we're regressing. I think that's happening, but I think, I honestly think the antidote to that is not to try and constrain it, but to have more conversations like this in the open where we see the well, let's common let's hope this ground. goes viral. What? <laughs> let's hope you know it goes I mean? viral, Tony. You know, more, more of these conversations, I think, is a better antidote to that problem than simply trying to put them behind brick walls and say, don't talk about it. That's my belief. Maybe I'm wrong and maybe you're right. But well, I think we've had a nice discussion. As usual. I think some good points have come out. Some things that I didn't even anticipate we would talk about. No, but yeah. we've moved on. You thank always you your, choke me up a bit. Thank you for your input as well. No, you always hit me here. Well, that's the best way, Tony. Yeah. That's really the best nice. way. That's the best way. Thank you. Because Adam. you know what it is, Tony? We are emotional beings. Right? And sometimes <laughs> when we look at or feel the emotion of the other, yeah. it gives us a, a, a reflection of perhaps maybe the subject has a little bit more deeper nuances yeah. than I've read. Of course, it's vice versa, right? So, it's, uh, Sweet. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Take care. Cheers. <laughs> See you later.